It's time for a bit of hardware hacking on my 2003 Eurovan. Welcome to Hack a Week. I've had this Eurovan for a few years now. It's been about a year off the road because the automatic transmission failed. Wah, wah. Uh, these things tend to do that. The uh, 01P and the 01M automatic transmission that came in Eurovans is a little, leaves something to be desired, let's put it that way. They, they tend to fail between like 120, 200,000 miles, depending on how well they're maintained or not maintained. And how much stress they've been through on long trips, lots of heat, not doing the oil changes on the transmission properly. It has a water to oil cooler. So what that does is the pump in the transmission that moves the fluid around, shoves some of it through a cooler that also has water flowing through a different part of it. It's all separated by baffles of aluminum, etc. They can leak. I just recently did service on one where all of the fluid made its way into the cooling system. That was quite a mess. Fortunately, that transmission is still okay. We did a service on it and we put an oil cooler on it, an extra one that goes right here in uh, front of the radiator that seemed to help out a lot but anyway they do fail and so i could have gotten another one for about five thousand dollars but it's kind of a sluggish automatic i personally don't like automatic transmissions i much prefer a manual so i did a manual swap on this i put in a five speed picked up all the parts i needed to do the whole conversion all the pieces the clutter the pedal cluster the shift lever all that stuff uh everything i needed from quality German parts in California. And got it all stuffed in there earlier this year. Everything went pretty well. Uh, I found out after the fact I had to leave the transmission control module connected and in place, or I would have issues with the ABS and the stability control. As soon as I plugged it back in, those two items went away. I had to do an adaptation on the throttle body and then it ran okay, but I had a check engine light. The check engine light was the transmission control module sending a request to the ECU, please turn on a check engine light because I can't find any of the solenoids, I have no speed sensors, I have no temperature sensor, etc., etc. So basically it was setting 16 codes, I think. Was it 16, 13, 12, a lot. Anyway, there was a lot of codes and it all had to do with those six solenoids six or seven of them and the speed sensors and if it's not there it's going to throw a code so really would like to get that check engine light out and it was quite a journey to get there so first i'm thinking well maybe there's something i can do with the ecu with the firmware the software the whatever um checked around into that that's pretty extensive that would have been really really tricky to do just getting into where that software is is hard enough as it is altering it is a whole other thing everything's in hexadecimal it's got to be converted where you can see what's going on and it that was a nightmare and i thought well what about hardware hacking that's my forte anyway and i started to think what's going on with that transmission control module so i realized at that point what's happening is the the transmission control unit i'm going to call it the tcu from now on the tcu was basically sending out little bits and saying is there some kind of resistance across these two terminals looking for the solenoids so i figured what if we were to just put something as a substitute in there like a relay with a similar ohm rating and for the speed sensors maybe just maybe i could get away with the same thing just take an ohm rating off the speed sensors and replace it with a resistor well as it turned out i had a eurovan come in the shop the one i just recently mentioned that i could do some probing on and figure all this stuff out so i got some ohm readings on all of the solenoids of the speed sensors the temperature sensor and i also probed the multifunction switch also known as the neutral safety switch so that i could figure out what happens with that as far as it being in park reverse neutral drive one two three etc so i got that figured out too and i came up with a hardware hack of a bunch of relays some resistors and it works this check engine light is out 
So this is a game changer for people in states like California, where if you do this manual swap, you still have that check engine light on, they will not pass your inspection. It may run fine and not make any smog violations, but that check engine light being on is a deal breaker. It's gotta be out. Um, they're called the readiness monitors. And so if you've got a check engine light on in California, uh-uh, you're not gonna get your registration. So this is a solution to that. So now after this long-winded introduction, I'm gonna walk you through just what's going on and I'm gonna build a black box, so to speak, um, which I'm going to offer as a kit to retrofit onto Eurovans that have had the manual swap done so the check engine light is out and it stays out. Let me show you what I did in rough form. So this is the prototype. This is just basically a bunch of uh, black relays. They measure 80 ohms each. The solenoids measured uh, around 70 something ohms, 77 ohms. I've got it written down somewhere. Anyway, these take the place of all of those transmission solenoids. There's eight of them here, but there's actually only seven. I've got one there as a spare. And let's see, this is uh, speed sensors. I've got these jumpered with resistors. And this is a jumper wire on the neutral safety switch, which is faking out the uh, TCU, making it think it's in first gear. First, second, third drive, any one of them will work. And so essentially what the TCU is seeing, transmission control unit, is it thinks the ignition is turned on, it is in gear, uh, and the engine is not running and nothing is moving. Uh, there's no speed sensor input. So it's as if everything is turned on but the vehicle is sitting still and it's in gear. So there's no reason now for the transmission control unit to throw any codes. So now the mission is package all this up really nice in a box where you can take the whole wire harness that used to go to the transmission and plug it into my little black box and a little device that we can insert onto that switch connector to jumper those wires and we'll be good to go. Let's take a look at some of the notes I uh, did. So the connector that uh, goes into the transmission that connects up all of the solenoids is on this plug. Uh, temperature sensor is also on there and I did the uh, pinouts, figured out what wires went where, what colors they were, and I actually utilized the harness I had. I cut it so that I could look inside see what color the wires were. And then I had to map out where everything went as far as what color wire, what number it came off from, which solenoid, etc. all that stuff. Also had a wiring diagram, which helps a lot. This is the transmission um, solenoids. There's the two speed sensors and the temperature sensors right there. So there's all my wires, the colors, the pin numbers, the solenoid numbers, etc. Once I got all that stuff, then I was able to lay out this sheet that shows the switch connector, the colors that are on each one of those pins, uh, and then that switch in each gear and what goes on. Basically, it's kind of a logic circuit is what it is. Um, in park, reverse, and neutral, pins five and seven are always connected. And then one of two, um, let's see, one, two, three, one of those, gets connected for reverse, two of them for park, etc. So you can see how you can get different combinations by which ones are connected. We're only concerned with drive three, two, one. So for drive, you just simply jumper wire two and three. You just put a jumper wire across those two on that connector and then the transmission control unit thinks it's in drive. And uh, that helps with eliminating the codes. Then down here I had the transmission connector and here are the pin numbers corresponding to the pin numbers here for all of these solenoids which have been replaced by relays at this point. And then there are the two vehicle speed sensors. That one takes a 1K resistor across the terminals. This one a 1.1 meg ohm and the relays uh, are 88 ohms each. So they worked out okay. So there it is, the basic pinouts of everything, how all the neutral safety switch works. And so we're basically just duplicating that in hardware. 
So first order of business for the box is just doing a rough sketch of what I need, uh, an idea of how I want to lay this out. Um, the resistors will go in the top of the box here. There's going to be an opening, and what's going to be poking out of that opening is all of these connectors. These are really nifty. These are connectors for these relays that you can connect together. So I'm going to design the box in such a way so that I can slide these right in. They'll lock in place and they'll sit like that and the relays will be accessible outside the box. Then we have the EV1 connectors. These are pretty common. You find these on uh, fuel injectors and other connectors in a lot of cars. This is the male part. This is the female part that was on the transmission wire harness. I cut it off for experimentation purposes, but it'll basically connect into that. And there will be two of those poking out the side. Then we have the transmission connector. And what I ended up having to do was buy the whole internal harness for a uh, 01P transmission. Also fits the 01M, a couple other ones. This is where the solenoids would plug in inside the pan of the transmission, right in the fluid and everything. Um, this is the main connector I'm after. This is the one that my wire harness will plug into. Um, so what I need to do with this is cut it right here, figure out what the wires are corresponding to those pins. Then I can connect up all of these guys to this and then stuff it all in the box. This is pretty much what's going to happen on the inside of this box. You can see a line here on my graph paper. That's the outline of the box. Everything is going to cram in there and the two EV1 connectors are going to go here. Transmission connector is going to go there. Transmission cable connector. Got a layout in SketchUp that's got those little tabs uh, in the perimeter there. Just like the ones on the sockets for the relays so all stacked together hopefully everything dimensions out right where they just snap right into place I've got a prototype of that outline going just that perimeter not the whole file so we'll see how that turns out in about 40 minutes I can already see I've got to shrink things up a little that's not quite gonna fit and neither is that end so back to the old drawing board as they say after three tries we got it Look at that, nice, nice fit, very nice, I love it. Now we can work on extruding this up further, making some holes for the other connectors and uh, move on. So there is what I've come up with for the relay box. This section right here will be where the relays go, then the transmission connector plug goes there, or the two EV1 plugs go over there and they get captured by the top of the case. That is beginning its print right now. The print is at 53% and it's looking pretty good. So while that is going, I'm gonna get back over here in the bench and I'm gonna get these little EV1 connectors wired up with the resistor that goes across each one. So these came with these nifty little uh, tabs that go in here. These are the connectors that will then push into the female side of the connector. I just solder wire onto there, poke it down into this hole, and it clicks into place. All set with a little resistor on there. And you can hook that up to the connector. And there we go, that's that. So let's see, we've got the EV1 connectors all taken care of. I need to do the temperature sensor at some point and I uh, was using a resistor for that, but I just discovered on the wire harness that goes inside the transmission right there is the temperature sensor. Anyway, I can salvage that and just jumper it across. Let's see. So I can just jumper pins one and 12 with that little temperature sensor and that'll take care of that. So I need to use this connector. This is the one I cut off from my Euroband Ugh. transmission harness. So I could do some testing. I need to solder all of this back into place later, but that's where the wire harness will connect in right there. 
Uh, I'm just going to use this much of it. So I need to open this up and do a little poking around to get the pin out locations and what they correspond to back here. And do a little surgery here and see what's underneath all this. And that's what I thought is just basically a ribbon cable. And it kind of feels like there's a splice right here somewhere. And there's all my wires. I suppose if I wanted to, I could just cut it here and then tap into the wires that go to the relays um, like up close right here then I don't have all this heavy bulky wire trying to stuff that inside the box. Incidentally some of these are going to get pulled out like the center yellow wire. I don't need that wire. Um, pretty easy to remove these. There's just a little tab that holds them in place and it's pretty much located right in that little square section right there so if you poke a screwdriver a small screwdriver down in there push toward the connector a bit and you release that little tab i'm going to bend that little tab back up so you can see what it looks like so that's what it looks like it's this little tiny tab you see it right there and when you insert it down in, of course, it catches and it can't pull back out. But we don't need that yellow wire. After a little bit of probing with a continuity tester, I've got these all labeled uh, with the pin number that corresponds to the pin number on the plug. Okay, that is all finished printing and it looks great. Let's check the fit on the EV1 connector. It should just slide right on there. Oh my, that's a beautiful thing. That fits perfect. And this connector should just slot in right there. Oh, that is also a perfect fit. And then a piece on top will capture it so it can't go anywhere. Excellent. And these need to slide onto these little fixtures. But that portion right there where it slides on has a little stopper down here in the bottom. I need to cut that away with an X-Acto. Okay, let's check the fit. First thing I need to do is squish the wires flat. It's gonna go which way? I'm gonna go, oh, I got them bending the wrong way this way it should just drop right in there and it does there's another tab on this end that's kind of a locking thing that needs to come off yes that's it that fits in there quite nicely I just realized in soldering all this stuff up, I can pull out all of the wires except for the black and white ones because all I need is terminals 85 and 86. That is the common numbers of the terminals on these black resistors, yeah, black relays that activate the relay. That's the coil winding. So that's all it needs. So all of this stuff can go away. So that's a lot of extra bulk wire crap that doesn't need to be there. Bye bye. Okay, everything is soldered up. And I need to just drop this relay stack into place. Squish that down a little bit. And then we've got our two EV1 connectors for the speed sensors. They pop in like so. Such a nice fit. That's it. All we need now is the top which as you can hear in the background is printing over there right now. The top's all done. Let's check out the fit. I've got this little semicircle here that pushes down on that. These are slotted for the EV1 connectors. Um, the relays have to come off first. All right.
let's see how this works out. Should slip in pretty tight. I've got four corner posts for screws. Ah, that's pretty nice. Squishes down pretty good. This is going to need a little bit of a trim, but that's okay because that means it's going to squeeze that connector good and tight. These fit beautifully. And the relays should be able to go in and clear the perimeter of this plastic bit. And the ends help hold it in. So I'm going to load these all back up and see. And yeah, it's looking like they're going to be just fine. Awesome. Alright, let's see how this works out. Should slip in pretty tight. I've got four corner posts for screws. Ah, that's pretty nice. Squishes down pretty good. This is going to need a little bit of a trim, but that's okay because that means it's going to squeeze that connector good and tight. These fit beautifully. And the relays should be able to go in and clear the perimeter of this plastic bit. And the ends help hold it in. So I'm going to load these all back up and see. And yeah, it's looking like they're going to be just fine. Awesome. I can tell you, having a 3D printer totally changes everything. Uh, now that is a little issue right there. This opening is not lining up quite right. I lined it up to the connector, not to the relay. So this is the next iteration of the box, number two. Uh, I changed things a little bit here on the opening and moved the relays a little bit too. Uh, let's see how this all lines up and fits. Not too bad, but there is a little bit to be desired. That's still got to be a little different, so work that out. I've got another one printing over there. This is much better than it was before. These are all good. Uh, so I got one more printing, and that should take care of that. Okay, I've got an enclosure for my emulator. Now I need to make a jumper connector for the multifunction switch. We need to bridge pins two and three, which is going to fake out the TCU transmission control unit and make it think it's in drive. I measured out just what's going on with that uh, plug on the end of the wire harness. Just made some quickie measurements of where everything was came up with something in uh, Google SketchUp, quick and easy to use, and I made this. And this will fit right over that connector. This takes the place, basically, of the multifunction switch. I've got some connectors here that came with the, uh, the EV1 connectors. These are the pins that insert into them, and they have these nifty little tabs. If you can see them, that little tab, see how they stick out like little wings, like barbs? And I'm thinking they're probably going to do a adequate job of holding these guys in place in this adapter. So I'm going to insert them right now. And they should just push through. They fit very nice. It's always a happy feeling when you CAD something up and then put it to work and it works great. And there they are installed. Little jumper wire between pins 2 and 3. And this will push on to the end of that wire harness where the connector is for the switch. And it will take care of that part of the hack. And there they are installed. Little jumper wire between pins 2 and 3. And this will push on to the end of that wire harness where the connector is for the switch. And it will take care of that part of the hack. And there it is installed in that little pigtail on the car. I've got the whole harness all coiled up right here, wire tied in a few places. I can tuck it in over there, 
And here is the box, the transmission emulator. I've got the plugs labeled, but you know what? Uh, without going into a whole bunch of troubleshooting, I was wondering how come after I put the box in, I had codes for the two speed sensors. As it turns out, they don't need the resistors across there. I had the resistors on there on those connectors, but I was using the connectors wrongly in that each one of those small uh, connector holes are connected together. Duh. But anyway, um, as it turned out, discovered that mistake and all these need is a jumper wire on the other side of that um, plug right there. All it does is just jumper the two wires together on each one and that's it. Done. So it doesn't really matter which one you plug it into. It just conveniently gives you that plug there to plug them into and you're good to go. And that's where the transmission connector goes. There's the relays on top. No check engine lights. Car is running great. And in California, would pass an inspection. All of this just can tuck out of the way pretty easily down in the side here, right next to the battery. You just kind of push that whole wire harness down in there. And then take the entire box of goodies and just stand it up like that. And it's good to go. If it got wet, Long term, it might not be a good idea, but there's nothing in there to really go strangely bad except for relays. Just, you know, if you uh, submerse yourself up to your windshield, probably a good idea to check more than just this little box. I guess that's going to wrap this up. Um, I'm a problem solver and I solved the damn problem. It took me a while, like a year of just messing around trying to figure out where to go next with how do I get rid of this damn check engine light and as it turned out the simple solution wins out like it does a lot of times down below there in the links you'll find uh, where you can go to a page to inquire about getting one of these pre-built if you want and also a link to the page with all the information you need to build your own if you want to either way uh, so the check engine light will be out you can do your manual swap this covers the O1M and the O1P transmission. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Till next time.